Inventory turnover is a popular inventory management concept, which is used to determine the overall efficiency of an entire supply chain. The ratio reflects the number of times inventory is replaced during a given period of time, and can give a useful indication of trends and how well a company controls its merchandise. So what does this magic formula look like? Well, numerically, inventory turnover is calculated as the ratio between the cost of goods sold divided by the cost price of the average stock level over the same time period. Typically, retail companies want this ratio to be as high as possible. This indicates that they don't overspend by buying too much inventory or waste resources on items that they don't sell and that the inventory they do buy can be sold effectively. The result? can also provide valuable insight from a supply chain management perspective. SKUs associated with low inventory turnover ratios indicate that a company is holding excessive or even dead inventory, and as such, this can help in identifying those items which should be written off. The key aim of a company is to rotate inventory as many times as possible to maximize their profits. This introduces a multiplier effect which highlights a company's capacity to generate profit on capital. The best way to illustrate this is with an example. So, if I have one biscuit here, which I can get from my cheap supplier for the fairly reasonable price of $1. This, I then go and sell for perhaps the princely sum of $2, maybe in one of those posh organic food stores. Then with these $2, I go and buy two more biscuits, which I, of course, can then sell for $4. So here what I'm doing is I'm making money by turning dollars into stock and then that stock back into money. And this process repeats itself again and again with more money to reinvest each time. This is what we call the multiplier effect. Basically, the more turns I can get out of this process to find how good I am at playing this game and in reality, how profitable I'm going to be. So it all sounds great on the surface, but where are the limitations? Well, in reality, businesses want to look at the margin they are making with a product. So if we imagine that in that biscuit example, we also sold one of those expensive healthy muesli bars for a profit of $10 in the time that we sold our four biscuits, then inventory turns become somewhat negligible. As such, inventory turnover only takes an average viewpoint and does not reflect the fluctuations of inventory and activity during a year, such as those seasonal sales peaks we discussed in a previous episode. It also ignores things like supply constraints, batch sizes, MOQs, lead times, which in practice are usually the driving force behind the observed inventory turnover ratios. So for those overseas suppliers, it makes sense to hold higher stock levels, as the stock needed to cover the hold lead time demand is much higher. And so to conclude, taking a lower turns perspective is narrow. As such, whilst turns may provide a high level insight about the supply chain as a whole, refining these measurements so they're done in the right way requires a hell of a lot of effort, and this can only be achieved through bespoke implementations. So that's everything for this week. If you've got any questions, make sure you leave us a comment below and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.